In England, one of these young ladies is known as the Queen Maud. What is your name, please? My name is Cassie McGowan. My name is Cassie McGowan. My name is Cassie McGowan. Only one of these young ladies is the real Cassie McGowan. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, Orson Bean, and Kitty Carlisle. On to Tell the Truth with your host, Bud Collier. Truth. Brought to you this week by Winston Filter Cigarettes. Good evening, panel. Good evening, Good evening. Buddy. How are you this evening? Fine. Looking Just bright and shining. Yeah. Orson, nice <laughs> to see you back. Nice to be back, Don't wait too long. How about opening up that uh, envelope and take out your first story, if you will, and follow along as I read from my copy right here. I, Kathy McGowan, star on a British television show called Ready, Steady, Go. As such, I am the arbiter of the current craze in fad happy England. The mod craze. The authentic female mod teenager uses no lipstick, applies a great deal of eye makeup, and wears straight hair. Mod clothes generally consist of tight sleeves, crepe shirts, ankle length skirts, white stockings, and granny shoes. Musically speaking, the Beatles and the Dave Clark Five are definitely mod. Although I am no longer a teenager, whatever I do and whatever I say automatically becomes mod law. I am known as the Queen Mod. Signed, Kathy McGowan. These three young ladies all claim to be Kathy McGowan, Queen Mod in England. And we start this questioning with Orson Bean. Orson? Thank you. Well, you three ladies look mod to me, for all I know. You, number one, uh, Miss McGowan, what does mod mean? What is it short for? It's um, short for modernist. That means an extremely dressed person. I see. Number two, I've seen pictures in the paper of a male mod. I've never seen pictures of a female mod. What does a male mod wear? Um, they wear exactly like the Beatles wear. Long hair and like that, huh? Modernistic clothes, yes. Number three, quickly, what instrument does Ringo play? One, two... The drums. You're right, I guess. <laughs> Number one, uh, <laughs> is it possible to iron your hair? With, a, with, a, with an iron, like for clothes, like to kneel down by the ironing board and iron your hair. I don't understand what you're talking about. You know about how you iron hair. your clothes with an iron? <laughs> <laughs> to get it straight. You, you iron it straight. straight. Kitty. Number two, who is Sidney Bernstein? Sidney Bernstein? I'm sorry, I don't know. Number three, do you know? No, I don't. Uh, number one, where do you broadcast from in England? Kingsway in London. Number two, what is radio diffusion? Um, radio diffusion? Yes. I've never heard of that word, I'm sorry. Thank Radio you. confusion. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, tell me, um, when you change your clothes, when you change your style, how often do you change it? Oh, it could be every day. Every day. Yeah. Number one, do they follow you every day if you change? Oh, yes. Number two, do you affect any kind of cowboy outfit when you change your clothes? Is this part of the mod... Um, the mod trend, yes. It is. I set the trend, they follow it. And it is, a, and cowboy clothes are part of it? No. <laughs> Tom Poston. Uh, I'd like to ask number one who Sidney Bernstein is. I don't know. I've never heard of I don't either. I was just you following either. up. The... <laughs> uh, number two, do you know who those young Parisians are? What do they call themselves? Young Parisian corresponding to the mods in uh, England. Well, there's Emmanuel Kahn who um, designs clothes for the mods in Paris. Oh, but... there are mods in Paris. Oh, yeah, definitely. Do you know another name for those mods in Paris, number three? Uh, no, I don't. I just, uh, I read something about it in Life magazine. I wondered if you were au courant with those things. Whatever that means. <laughs> uh, number one, who follows your dictums? Oh, most of the people in, in England. Gosh, that's quite Thank a responsibility. Number two, where's Mary Quant's main shop? Mary Quant's main shop in the West End. Uh, number three, what's the name of the discotheque on German Street? I don't know. Number one, do you know? There isn't a discotheque um, in German Street. And, and number two, when did you start in television? 
I started in television about six months ago. Number three, who's the girl on the British serial that wears the boots and the black, you know, kind of jazzy clothes? Yeah. Sit up there. Uh, number, uh, uh, number one, in Woolages, who carries the mod clothes in Woolages? I don't know what Woolages is. Um, number two, uh, wh uh, where's the disco, uh, what's the name of the discotheque on German Street? Is there one? I have the foggiest idea. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. It's time for you now to mark your ballots. So kindly do so strictly mod, if you will, please. Mark them at once, however, without change. No consultation. Simply vote now for number one, number two, or number three. Our team of challengers will be awarded $250 for every incorrect vote indulged in by our panelists. Are all ballots marked, panel? Very well, Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number one. I think they're all pretty and charming. I'd do anything they told me to. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought number one was uh, sort of regal in a kind of a beatnik way. <laughs> Peggy Cash, which one do you think it is? Boy, I don't know. But I voted for number two because it does seem to me that this girl did just get into television lately, this is Cassie McGowan, whichever one you are. I voted for two. Who said that Mary Quan shop was in the West End? I hope it wasn't two. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Orson, which well, one did uh, you enjoy? Number two didn't know what uh, radio diffusion is, and what few months I spent in England, that's uh, like when you're in a cheap hotel, that's all you have. It's like a thing on the wall, <laughs> and uh, providing you're alone, friends. And number three, uh, uh, even uh, though she didn't, uh, even though she knew the name of the lady with the boots and the black thing, whatever there was that described, I didn't vote for her. And uh, number three has a kind of a haughty, patrician, aloof grandeur that would want to make you take her home. And... So I voted for number, uh, <laughs> number one. <laughs> you voted for number one. All right, that's two for number one, one for number two. And where did your vote fall, Kitty? I voted for number one. Um, <laughs> I think they're all marvelous. But I would follow number one if I had to follow the mod fashion. I think she has a kind of je ne sais quoi that I'd follow. Follow her the French school. Yes, yes. In there. <laughs> All right, three for number one. That's close to unanimity. One for number two only. Let's go with that one into our peculiar charm circle where we learn the truth and nothing but the truth. Mm -hmm. Learning it now as we find out which of these young ladies actually is Queen Maud of England and by name, Kathy McGowan. So will the real Kathy McGowan please stand up? Ah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Daddy. And you had never heard of ironing your hair? No, no, I just wash it and leave it straight. Well, I met a charming friend of Orson's one evening, and she does literally keep it straight by ironing it on an ironing board. <laughs> it's true. That's she right. Does she indeed. described she does. the whole operation to us one evening. And mod actually means? A modernist. Just a modernist. The, the most modern, is that yes. it? Thank you. Yes. Well, it's wild. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Number two, what is your real name and what do you do? My name is Annette Carswell, and I'm a stewardess for Pan American World Airways. <laughs> Number three, what is your real name and what do you do? Uh, my name is Angela Vernon. I'm a bunny at the New York Playboy Club. <laughs> ah. mm -hmm. Well, ladies, it was good fun and I hope you had a good time too. There was only one incorrect vote, but that's worth $250 from Winston Filler Cigarettes. We thank you very much for sharing your evening with us and hope it brightened your life a bit. You did ours. Goodbye and God bless you. <laughs> easy now and let's all look at this brief film. Now let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name please? Father Daniel Linehan. My name is Father Daniel Linehan. And my name is Father Daniel Linehan. Follow along once again if you will please panel with your copies of this story. I, Father Daniel Linehan, am known as the Earthquake Priest. I am director of one of the largest seismological observatories in the country. While seismology is basically the study of earthquakes, it has many other practical applications. For example, my staff and I were responsible recently for testing the depth of the bedrock for the foundations of the new Verrazano Bridge in New York Harbor. My travels have taken me to both poles, 
to the Arctic to determine the new location of the magnetic North Pole and to the Antarctic to measure the thickness of the ice at the South Pole. On assignment to the Vatican in Rome, I used seismology to help archaeologists locate the actual tomb of St. Peter. Signed, Father Daniel Linehan. <laughs> These three gentlemen all claim to be Father Daniel Linehan, the earthquake priest. And we'll start this cross-examination with Kitty Carlisle. Thank Kitty. you, Bud. Um, Father, number two, what is, what is geodetics? Oh, geodetics is a uh, general study of the uh, configuration of the earth and its characteristics. Thank you. Number th uh, Father, number three, uh, who constructed the piazza in front of St. Peter's? The main design on the, um, for the, the columns was, uh, was Bernini. Thank you. Uh, number one, what did you use to locate the actual tomb of St. Peter's, and at what, uh, when did you do this? The years 1951 and 1952, I used my seismological methods to determine the area in which the tomb would most likely be found. Uh, number two, oh, it's fascinating. Tom Poston. Uh, number two, is there such a thing as a temblor? Well, you're probably referring, that's another name uh, sometimes used for earthquakes. Thank you. We had an earthquake specialist on here once who said there was no such thing. I went home and looked it up, and there is, too. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, do you pick up nuclear blasts on your equipment? Uh, we pick up some, yes. You do. Uh, I would like to know, number three, uh, was, uh, say, uh, uh, where, did, where was the tomb thought to be before you came in and, and did your work? It was thought to have been at, uh, in about the same location, but they did need some guarantee uh, on the fact that it would be there. How did you... Uh, Peggy Cass. Thank you. And number three, when, when, in what year was the earthquake at Messina? Uh, Messina was the latter part of the last century, about 1898, I believe. Uh, and no, Father number two, where are the Blue Hills? The Blue Hills? I don't know those. Uh, uh, Father number one, where is your seismograph located? At Weston Observatory in Massachusetts. Uh, number three, uh, there's a fault in California, a, 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 an earth fault. What is that called, please? Uh, I'm not sure which one you're referring to. The one to. that caused a big earthquake. The San Andreas Fault. Uh, uh, number one, uh, why do you need a new location for the North Pole? I mean, how come it's moved? The North Pole. Yes, it says here. Magnetic. The, the, oh, no. the magnetic North Pole. Isn't that the North Pole? No, that's the magnetic North Pole, which is different, and that does move around. I only thought we had one North Pole. Orson <laughs> <laughs> B. Magnetic North Pole. I had it living with me a week ago, Thursday. <laughs> a number, uh, Father, uh, Father Linehan, number one. Uh, how how far down in the ice and in, in the in, in the Arctic? How far down in ice do you have to go to strike land? Strike land? Yes. In the ice? Yeah. Well, many parts in the North. Would in you the North Pole, how far down under the ice is there oh, land? Oh, the North Pole, if you're speaking of it very specifically, there's water there. Oh, you, you have to you, go you all have the way to go down to the ocean. Yeah. Yes. Number, uh, Father, uh, uh, Father Linehan, number three. Uh, I read where uh, 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 Cardinal Spellman gave two New Year's masses in Antarctica. How is that possible? Uh, you mean in the same day? Yeah. It's possible for him to... Sorry, we have to leave that one up in the air, but our time is gone, unfortunately. So if you just simply get busy at marking your ballots, we'll wrap this one up in a hurry, and I hope correctly. Let's see how well you do in guessing who is the real one. Vote now, if you will, without consultation, of course, for number one, or for number two, or number three. All marked, and quickly, too, I see. Tom, for whom did you vote? I think I've been slickered. I just <laughs> think I've been... I voted for number three. I thought he had a, a very a rugged, healthy, outdoor kind of look, and, and I suppose a man who does this kind of exploring and work would be uh, uh, used to intemperate climates. Peggy. Well, I voted for number three, too, because number two didn't know where the Blue Hills were, and that's where that observatory is, because I come from around there. <laughs> and, uh, and also, that's the name of that California fault, number three. You're right, but maybe it's number one. Well, <laughs> there you go. Which one do you think is the real one? I voted for number three, too. I thought numbers one and two looked like they had their wardrobe sent over from Eve's costumes, which is a well... Uh, and number three looks like he's ruddy and scientific and would be interested in this sort of thing. All right. 
Is, you're approaching unanimity. Are you going to make it unanimous, Kitty? Number three. <laughs> All right. That is unanimous. Well, um, number two said geodetics was the story of land configuration. I think it has something to do with the oceans. And number three said it, that the artist... Had, no, he's shaking his head at me. I'm <laughs> <laughs> number two, oh, no. <laughs> Well, let's well, find out. Number three knew about the Andreas Fault and Bernini, which I think is correct. And it's number two. <laughs> no, it's not. We'll approach the truth immediately then and find out without any further ado which one of these gentlemen actually is the uh, father who is known as the earthquake priest. So will the real Father Daniel Linehan please stand up? <laughs> That shows you that truth will out from a man of the cloth, you see? <laughs> Just to keep the record straight, Father Linehan is director of the Weston, W-E-S-T-O-N, observatory at Boston College. That's where he does his very important work. Thank you, sir. Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My real name is Dick Jennings, and I'm a news reporter for radio station WJRZ in New York, New Jersey. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> <Close> to home. <laughs> and number two, what is your real name and what do you do, sir? Well, my real name is Jack Hinman. I'm a captain of the United States Navy and commanding officer of Naval Air Station, New York. <laughs> well, gentlemen, in checking the score, we find that the panel had one of its rare, very dazzling moments in which there were no incorrect votes. In that case, coming from you to you from Winston Filler Cigarettes comes $150. And our sincere thanks for brightening our evening. We hope it brightened yours a little bit, too, and that you enjoyed your visit. On your way out, you'll be given, of course, a carton of Winston's, and we thank you very much again. Goodbye, and God bless you. <laughs> we'll put the panel back to work in just a moment, but in the meantime, here's something you'll enjoy. Now let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is John Zemlansky. My name is John Zemlansky. My name is John Zemlansky. Follow along again with your copy of this story, if you will, please, panel, which you find in that envelope. I, John Zemlansky, am principal sanitarian for the New Jersey Department of Health. I am also on the faculty of Rutgers University, where I teach the only course in the country in garbage disposal. In my class, I lecture on the correct preparation, storage, and collection of refuse, as well as the most modern methods of disposal. Once a semester, I take my students on a field trip to the Jersey City dump. <laughs> Signed, John Zemlansky. Very well, these three gentlemen all claim to be John Zemlansky, expert on garbage disposal. We'll start with Peggy Cat. Peggy? <laughs> <laughs> Number two, why do you store garbage? It says your storage of garbage. Oh, I you... throw mine away. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't store it. Uh, you dispose of it. You store it momentarily and then dispose of it quickly. Oh. Uh, Number three, is the field trip to the Jersey City dump a must, or can you get out of that if you want to? <laughs> Oh, it is a must. It is a must. Uh, number one, across the river from New York, sometimes it's quite pungent. Uh, <laughs> do you keep any of your garbage there? Um, that pungent odor in New Jersey is not garbage. It isn't. It's chemicals. Oh, number three, do you send much of your garbage? Arson B. Yes, I found it to be uh, somewhat strong. I've never been to the Jersey City. Uh, I, I visited the Bayonne dump once. Number... Uh, <laughs> Number three, recently we <laughs> celebrated the 150, let me get this straight now, the 154th anniversary of the invention of the activated sludge method of sewage disposal. Can you describe this in your own words, as you wish? I don't know anything don't know about, about it. it. All right. <laughs> number one, number one, where is Germ City? <laughs> I don't know. No. Number three, what are the qualifications to, to be a roto-rooter operator? You know <laughs> I mean, these are good things you should know. That's a... <laughs> you have to have a degree in uh, Roto Rooter. Two or three? Uh, number two. Two. Roto Rooter. What are the qualifications? To be a Roto Rooter operator and, well, there are no you know, clean out somebody's uh, thing. Just some short training. There's short no, training. Uh, no formal I see. training. 
Kitty Carlisle. Number one, is diphtheria caused by water or rats? Diphtheria can be caused by a germ from either. Number two, the bubonic plague. Does that come from water pollution or rats? Rats. In Jersey. Well, they ought to know about that if they're sanitation people, because epidemics are very serious if the sanitation doesn't go right. Um, now you put me... <laughs> I have a very important question to ask. Number three, who do you teach all this to? Municipal officials. Number three, what do you find in the Jersey dump? Everything that comes out of the home. Tom Poston. Uh, number three, what's the purpose of, of aeration? Aeration or aeration is sometimes mispronounced. What does that mean to a, to a uh, sanitation commissioner? Expert? Well, you're getting far afield, I think, aren't you? I don't know. Number two, is that far afield to a sanitation uh, expert? Aer aeration of water is necessary to uh, give it uh, extra oxygen. But aeration for uh, garbage... Uh, uh, deterioration would be to feed oxygen when you are uh, incinerating. Uh, then uh, that's you. all the time we have. I'm happy to say. Uh, sorry to say. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for you now to mark your ballots, if you will, please. Mark them at once on the top of an old garbage can, if you want to, but mark them. <laughs> and without any discussion amongst yourselves at all, vote for number one, number two, or number three. You all marked? Yes, you are. Very well. Tom, for whom this time? I voted for number two there. Uh, because I, I thought he took uh, refuse and things very seriously, and it can be a very serious problem. I mean, uh, consideration in, in municipal uh, management. Peggy. Well, I voted for number two, because we were all kidding around, and he really stuck up for that garbage. Didn't he? <laughs> Orson B., which one do you think it is? Well, number, uh, numbers one and two are very erudite. Number two, uh, you said about the aeration. I mean, but number three, to me, a pro is a pro, and he says, you know, you send it out of the home, we take care of it, and whatever it is, it's gone. And I think that there weren't any big words with him. He looks like a garbage man to me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Yes. All right, Kitty, what little gem have you to add? Well, I voted for number one, That's because right. a Rutgers is in New Jersey, and when the question was asked why the New Jersey thing smells so pungently, <laughs> he said it wasn't anything to do with anything except chemicals, and I feel that he was right. So All I right. voted for number well, one. Well, that's the first really widely split one you've had tonight. One for number one, one for three, two for two. Let's move into the charm circle with that one if we can, <laughs> and find out who's right and who's wrong. Learning now which of these gentlemen actually is uh, the expert on garbage disposal. So will the real John Zemlansky please stand up? You never in your wildest dreams or ever thought that you would wind up looking like a garbage man. <laughs> well, it may be somebody's garbage, but it's my bread and butter. Ah. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Maybe somebody's garbage, but it's my bread and butter. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, what is your real name and what do you do, sir? I'm John Harris. I'm a writer for the Hearst newspapers. <laughs> Number two, you've got most of the votes. What is your real name and what do you do, sir? My name is Joseph Fury, and I'm a supervisor in the purchasing department of the American Can Company. <laughs> <laughs> well, we checked the score and find there was only one correct, and that means three incorrect votes, gentlemen. Three times $250 is what you get from Winston Filter Cigarettes, or $750. And our congratulations and our sincere thanks. On your way out, you'll be given a carton of Winston's. Again, thank you, good night, and God bless you. Now, a message of interest from a fine product. Uh, when disaster strikes, when a helping hand is needed, I'm sure you know the Red Cross is always there with your help, so do whatever you can to support 
the American Red Cross. That's all the time we have for tonight, but a lot of laughs, and I thank you for that and making it the wonderful show you always do. Good night, panel. Good, Good night, night. Good night to all of you, and don't forget to join us at the same time next week, and I'll see you tomorrow afternoon on the daytime show. In the meantime, in behalf of Winston Filter Cigarettes, don't you forget to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> to tell the truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Cotman tonight. has been brought to you by Winston Filter Cigarettes. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. This is Johnny Olson speaking for To Tell the Truth, this program is recorded.